Good morning. They figure out all kind of contraptions with these masks, but the one thing I think they haven't figured out is how to wear glasses and mask at the same time. And you put on the mask, I'm sure some of you are wearing the glasses, they start doing funny things. So I'm looking forward to like they have swim goggles that don't foam up. Maybe if we're in this a little bit longer, they're gonna figure out some kind of ventilation at the top that allows you to wear the mask. A little bit of joke. <laughs> so it is so good to, to be in your presence this morning. We come to the end of a series. Um, today the sermon title is the same as it was the first Sunday, Let's Stay Together, Part 2. This month we have been talking about commitment. And we've been talking about commitment in relationships and commitment to, to God, commitment to our spiritual journey, commitment to that great call to serve others, commitment to see um, and our commitment to our church um, in this October, our commitment of our time, our commitment of our financial resources. And today we find ourselves back at our commitment to each other. In the one book, One Chicago 2020 selection, the book was Exit West by author Hamid. And this author, he tells the story of two main characters who meet prior to war, but whose relationship becomes sealed by war. While this New York bestseller may be described as a love story by some journalists, it really is how everyday people in extreme hardships experience community and commit to each other. Independent Nadia and Reserve Saeed first meet in school. There is a spark amongst them, but then the war comes, and it is not safe for Nadia to live alone anymore, and Saeed and his father are thrown into grief by the stray bullet that kills Saeed's mother. And now here, she is living unmarried in a conservative Muslim area with Saeed and his father. They are simply trying to survive, and they find comfort and intimacy in each other. They eventually leave their homeland to survive when it becomes clear that staying where they are, they could die. His father, Saeed, says, you two must go, but me, this is my homeland. Your mother is here. I must stay. This story reminds me that people don't flee just to be fleeing. They flee because they are fleeing for their lives. That often people at the borders are trying to simply survive. And for a long time as refugees, these two live in different places, but they often stay together, not because it's so much of a romantic story. They stay together out of necessity. As they are running from their war-torn country, they find home far away from their birthplace, in each other. Poets, poet, poet, <clears throat> I'm getting the hacking with the radiator. Poet Stacy Ann Chin describes home as not any structure built by the hands of men obsessed with their own immorality. Home is where the strings of you are made to hum the deepest song of belonging. It is the time and place and gathering of people who remind you of your ability to cast spells on the walls of the impossible. Home is the consistent reassurance of a lover who doesn't mind saying, I love a thousand times should you need reminding. Home is how you crafted bold colors and hope spoken aloud, plans made in concert, love given easily without inner conflict. Home is the freedom to dream oceans without fear of waking, drowning in terror. Often people are driven into the arms of another out of great pain and hardship. The Pew Research Center top 10 reasons people come to church, number four, is for comfort in times of trouble and sorrow. This is where we enter the biblical text today. In the biblical text today in Living Color, this rich narrative of Ruth and Naomi knowing each other. They are not new to each other. Ruth is Naomi's daughter-in-law, and so as is living day by day, 
by each other. They learn some things that you can only learn when you live with people day by day next to each other. They know each other's favorite color and favorite meal. They know who snores at night and who has kept up in the night with their thoughts keeping them in pondering who they know the tender spots of one's existence and all of the idiosyncrasies that follows each other around. At first, Naomi loses her husband, but then her two sons die too, leaving three women alone in a time when patriarchy sat on a throne. They are widows in a time when women needed men as coverings. And it is at this moment of crisis, real crises, like how are we gonna make it without them? that seals this relationship between Naomi and Ruth. They see and find each other in ways they have not up until this moment. And so here we are. What brings people together can also tear them apart. So this commitment to stay together is intentional. Remember, Naomi had two daughter-in-laws, and the other one's name was Orpah. And when she had lost her two sons, she said to both daughter, look, I am an old woman. I am like a heavy burden around your neck. I got nothing for you all. I can't even support myself. So I got nothing for you two beautiful sisters, nothing, absolutely nothing. It's best if you go back to your own people. And on that note, Oprah says, I believe I'll take you up on your word. And she does what she has to to depart. And yet Ruth says, I'm not going anywhere, old lady. And Naomi tries to impress upon her the seriousness of their situation. And in words that are poetry, Ruth says, wherever you go, I will go. And your people will be my people. In other words, home is where the strings of you are made to hum and the deepest song of belonging. And so in what seems like a hard moment, two ladies commit to stay together. Let's, let's stay together. Naomi has been stripped of everything. Many of us have been in that moment when it feels like you got nothing, nothing to give, nothing to offer, nothing to protect you, nothing to cause you to put your feet on the floor in the morning. And we send those who love us away. We're mean, we're, we're not easy to be around because we got nothing. And yet in this moment is an opportunity and Ruth, the foreign woman seizes it. She chooses the old wrinkly skinned woman. She chooses to stay in uncertain time. She chooses to hold on to this woman. She chooses to seal her fate to her mother-in-law. She chooses to commit when so many others will hit the road. I was talking to a married couple about the longevity of their relationship and how did they do it? And the one wife says, at some point you just know of her relationship with her wife. She says, for a while we argued we bumped heads. You wonder if this is really the one. Should I stay? Should I go? And then one day she said, I just knew that she was it. I got off the fence and then things changed. I knew this was where I was going to lay all my chips. I knew this was where I was going to put all my eggs. And you decide I am all in and you work hard to try and build this relationship. You realize you're fully, fully, committed. In church study books and even in COVID, they describe three kinds of church people. You know them. The first is, are those people who simply come to worship, whether it's digital or here in person. They just come for the worship. They don't get to know anyone. They don't make any connections. We probably wouldn't even know their names. They come for the worship experience, the celebration of love, and that's it. That's group number one. And then there's group number two. They come and they're a little more known. You may know their name. They may have introduced themselves. They may have stayed around. Um, they may have even given in the offering. They may do something from time to time, and then that's it. They pull out. But then there's this third person. This third person is totally, totally committed. This third person totally dives in. And this group is all in. They buy the whole message of Jesus Christ and they believe and they are committed to the vision of the church. Perhaps it's not so very different in life. You have those who kind of just come to work. They just do their thing and then they leave. They don't really make attachments at all. 
it's really they primarily are concerned about their own world, their own periphery. And then you have this second group who kind of are immersed. They're aware of what's going on around them. They know, they see pain, and they kind of want to do something, but they don't know exactly what to do. And then you have this third group. This third group, the people who are committed, they won't leave you in the rain. They won't bail out when things get hard. They won't go because you say get out of your life. They may give you space and pray for you a while. They may take a break from you, but they will come back. Those people are golden. These people are many of you. You keep giving, you keep coming, you keep praying, you keep staying, and you keep striving to be in relationship with God. This third group, famine can't turn them around. Hard days can't turn them around. Abusive elected officials can't turn them around. Capitalism can't turn them around. Selfishness can't turn them around. The news and more bad news can't turn them around. Loss of loved ones can't turn us around. It might weigh heavily on you. You might be burdened, but it can't turn them around. Ruth says, do not press me to leave you or turn back from you following you. Where you go, I'll go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There I will be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well, even if death parts me from you. Amazing thing happened. When Naomi heard these words, she said no more. She got it. We are still very much in the middle of something, something, and we don't know where it is taking us. But we don't have to let go of each other. We can take extra effort to be kind with our words. In Exit West, it came to the point between these two where they said they had to be intentional because it was easy to be callous. It was easy and stressed to be mean and unkind to one another. And so they had to work hard at being kind. Sometimes when we're stressed out, we're not our best selves. But we can work and be intentional about being nice to one another. We can affirm the value and worth of every sibling in creation, whether they lean straight or otherwise. We can still hold on to love and grace and mercy, which Psalms tells us we get a new abundance of every day. We can dispel someone's isolation. Yeah, I know that wasn't your best self. We can share one another's burdens like Ruth did with Naomi. Where you go, United, I'll go. Even though we don't know what tomorrow, what tomorrow will bring, we can turn on an we can turn on one another, or we can do something even more awesome. We can turn to one another. And as far as I'm concerned, Al Green don't have to be the only one to say, let's stay together. United, let's, let's stay together. Amen.